Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you're here with me today. Today is Sunday, March 12th, 2023. Boy, today is daylight savings time. I hate daylight savings time. Yeah, um, but for those of you that have to work, I'm retired. Uh, you get to get off work an hour early, but you have to go in an hour early too. So you can always look at it. Is the glass half full or half empty? So you can think, well, I'm getting off work an hour early. Um, anyways, and here's a current view at 9.39 a.m. Central Daylight Time. It would be 8.39 there at Yellowstone. Um, yeah, a little steamy. There was a magnitude 3.9 earthquake last night at about um, 8 something. Let me look. 8.03 there at the park. Now that would be their time. 162 people said that they felt it. It was a magnitude 3.9. They did not fudge about this. Intensity level 4 for both the shake map and did you feel it map. I just refreshed the page and now it's up to 164 people who sent in reports. Uh, let's see, all the way down by Caldwell near Boise, Idaho. Uh, let's see here. Intensity level 4 for Donley. Donley. Um, Cascade. Uh, Cambridge. Cambridge. Up north. McCall. Intensity level 3. Uh, down here by Eagle, intensity 2 and 2. I like it when EMSC, that's the European Agency, uh, puts up reports of what people felt. They don't even have it listed. And so probably that's why there's no reports of what people felt. Looks like we're looking at Beehive. The snow is above the boardwalk. Uh, they probably got at least four feet of snow there. Um, people who were recently there mentioned about how weird it was to walk on the boardwalk on the snow. Um, and you notice there's none on the ground here. Yeah, the heat from Yellowstone is melting that snow, but the boardwalk is raised. So it's not melting it. A little bit over here is probably a lower. We got some icicles. So 8.03 p.m. last night in that location intensity level four means it was felt indoors by many people outdoors by a few at night some may have been woken up dishes windows and doors were rattling autos rocked noticeably i've been having problems with google earth i don't have my notes all my fault lines that i got drawn out hopefully i did not lose that information yeah that was a lot of work that i put into it Here's the location of that 3.9 earthquake. Okay. So I did mark that and I saved it. I hope saving it doesn't mean that I lost all my notes. I got years and years of work put in to all the different fault lines around the world. So let's zoom in. Looks like we got a lake over here. Um, Lake Cascade. And let's see, we got farmland. Okay. There's a house over here. A farm. I hope they fix it. I tried to send a report in that it wasn't working properly. And yeah, I couldn't even do that this morning. I have four monitors that I downloaded. Over here on the left is Mary Lake. Uh, this is Borehole 208, which is Yellowstone Lake. Borehole 207. There's the spectrogram for that one. That's the Madison River area. And here we have the western boundary. All right, we'll click on it to see what the spectrogram was showing. 
Yeah, for uh, Mary Lake. Yep. And you can see the lines of melt. Let's open up. Well, I'll, I'll make this one bigger first. Yeah, 207. And yeah, it came in as a magnitude 3.98. Almost a magnitude 4. It rattled for quite a while. Like I said before, as long as you got the entire P wave of the earthquake, it doesn't matter, or not the P wave, the uh, seismic signature, it doesn't matter where you take um, the signature from. So, yeah, this is uh, tectonic in nature. Um, plate movement, more likely. We know that the North American plates slowly moving southwest. You see all the sharpened points. Okay, let's come down to what it was showing when I pulled the files. Let's see, we'll go to the seismic signature. Pretty small, it's hard to tell. Okay, tectonic. All right, and we got several other earthquakes they have not reported. This one's, we'll do this one first. And I'll go to the other monitors. Let's see. It is on all four monitors. I don't know why, but when it's the weekend, yep, they don't report them. They don't check their phones or text messages. It is marked in red on three of the monitors. The computer picked it up as an earthquake. Let's go to the spectrogram. Right there. Okay, Mary Lake. The borehole for um, Yellowstone Lake. The borehole for the Madison River. That's a good one. Um, we'll go take the signature from that. And then we got the western boundary. All right, let's make this one bigger. Okay, 12 minutes after midnight universal time. So that would have been 4.12 p.m. Uh, my time, which is central daylight time. Uh, 3 12 there at the park. Let's take a look at the seismic signature. That comes in as a magnitude 2.29. Those of you that might be watching on a larger screen or TV, um, it's at the bottom, MD 2.29. Okay, and then let's do this one here. Okay, uh, one. 118. So that would have been about 618 p.m. local time. I'm going to say that it was a magnitude 2.14. A lot of twos were getting larger. Yeah, this one here was almost a four. That was probably um, magma coming in, the, the fault movement. Uh, I don't have the map for um, the um, fault that goes up all the way to um, Canada. Yeah, I wish they had that stuff. That was a lot of work that I had done. What else we got? So that's all that's on that monitor, which is the borehole. All right, let me pull this up. Let's see. A lot of shaking at this borehole here. 208. Look at them all marked in red. Okay. That one's Yellowstone Lake, and that would be by the fishing bridge. Let's take a look at what it's doing down here when I pull the files. Yeah, look at that. Now, there's a crack at the bottom of the lake, for those of you that might be new, um, where the magma's trying to come up through the cap of rhyolite. Um, those that have been with me for a while will understand that. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. So, okay, we got a one. The most recent in red was that one there. I want to say about two years ago, there was an earthquake swarm where the magma was trying to come up. Yeah, look at all that shaking. And this actually... For those of you that are new, are what they call blobs of magma. Yeah, that's their actual scientific term. It's called magma when it's still under the ground. And yeah, 
they call it blobs of magma when it's trying to come up there's a little quake in there right there yeah all because of the uh, plates moving we got the teton pass fault this yellowstone's just riddled with faults one leading into another and um yeah the most recent eruption which i talked about um was down there at pitchstone plateau that was about seventy thousand years ago they always talk about you know the last major eruption but they've had um according to bob smith who works at the university of utah at least at least if not more according to him there's been 30 smaller eruptions since the last major eruption now the smaller eruptions varied in size from hundreds of times larger than mount st helens to those that were about the size of mount st helens um but i'm bringing up pitchstone plateau because oh, i wish i had my notes i could show you better well we'll just go over to that location um it's on the outside edge of the caldera for yellowstone lake and what happened was um there was dike intrusion a crack um maybe on the outside wall of the caldera um but a crack formed which allowed this eruption 70,000 years ago of the magma to come in yeah and it, it was just huge just huge you can probably pretty well see the um the area of magma that flowed out let's see is this heart lake no lewis lake okay when it had its last major eruption um it did a counterclockwise rotation of unzipping starting up in the madison river area which is where they always have these earthquake swarms when um, that unzipping happened they had a mixing of lava which is really unusual where they have the top cap of rhyolite and the basalt which is much hotter um, than the rhyolite the, the basalt came up mixed with the rhyolite and then it did its unzipping like a zipper doing a counterclockwise rotation until it got down here by Heart Lake. Looking for Heart Lake. Wish I had my notes. Right there. So when the unzipping happened down here by Heart Lake, that's when the two calderas collapsed, which is the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. Let's see if they're looking at it. Nope, they're still looking at Beehive. But anyways, that hill that they often show um, on the right side of the Old Faithful live webcam, that is the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. Uh, one of two rhyolite domes that have risen up since its last uh, eruption after it collapsed and that's growing. So the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome off over here and the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome probably got its name because of the smell of the rotten eggs those collapsed at the same time and then they had the uh, super eruption that blew out the mountains um, yeah right through here see this little rocky formation there and there that is from there to there where the uh, Teton um, fault zone is running through okay and this whole area because of the uplift that's going on the ground is really really brittle but when it blew out yeah you can see you can kind of see where the uh, mountains blew out and then let's see let's bring this out this here is the snake river plateau um, where the eruptions happened coming up through the the ages and i want to go yeah see there's that 3.9 that's probably along the fault zone that runs all the way up to uh, Canada. Boy, I hope they get this fixed. I don't want to lose all my notes. Everything happens for a reason. Maybe I needed to clean up my clutter. I don't know.
another one of the most recent eruptions. It wasn't an explosive eruption. It was down here by uh, craters of the moon. This eruption, which was just uh, lava that came up, it didn't explode. Um, that was probably about 10,000 years ago. And Native Americans talk about how this snake and an eagle, I think it was, had this battle and wrapped uh, the lava wrapped around the uh, volcano and they fought it out. And then we got another lava flow over here. But this one here was only about 10,000 years ago. And it does have rhyolite, um, but not a lot where it was an explosive, really, you know, charged eruption. It just was mostly of basalt. Maybe it's good that I don't have all my notes on here for you guys. I want to bring it out because, let's see here. Um, another interesting fact. Let's see. Okay, let's zoom in. All right, there's Pitchstone Plateau. Up over here for the uh, Lava Creek Tuff. Um, that eruption is the only eruption there at Yellowstone, which actually brings up ancient crust of the earth when it was still under the ocean eons ago. Um, yeah, let's see. All right. So that... Uh, is it going to do it for me? No, that's tough cliff. Hold on. All right, I want to go to Lava Creek Tough. Okay, up over here. This is the only one that more, I don't know, the plume came up from the mantle of the earth, and it actually had material uh, from ancient seas. Yeah, it was that. that's the only one. Only one. Yeah, the Lava Creek Tuff. You know, they've had other eruptions that brought up magma from the, the mantle. But this one was so deep. And that was because of the Pacific Plate subducting underneath the North American Plate. I thought that was interesting that this was the only eruption that that showed material from ancient, ancient oceans. Geologists say that the uh, magma um, that hardened became lava looked like marble cake. Let me show you. There you go. Now the pink rock, that would be rhyolite. And then the other would be um, basalt. But see how, yeah, I can understand them calling it looking like marble cake. If you're out looking for rocks, rock hounding, yeah, um, quite possibly the rocks that you find have this pinkish hue would be rhyolite, one of the most explosive magmas there is because of um, um, the gases that are involved. Uh, another interesting thing, let me bring this down. All right. Um, try and remember. Um, most magmas that come up from volcanoes have a mix of water. And Yellowstone is one of the uh, very few if not only volcano, that the magma that came up for some reason did not have a mixture of water. All right, here's a screen capture of some text, and I underlined it. It says uh, that there was such an extreme, I mean, it had water, but it was so little, uh, the depletion of the water. Um, there, The amount of depletion is not seen anywhere else in the world. The images in black here on this map, those are the areas where they found this depletion. Um, oh, I can't remember the abbreviation. Let's see, do I have it down here? Let's see, I believe that's the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. This one right here, I was talking about that. Um, they originally thought that that was one um, eruption. Uh, for that location, but it was actually three. South Biscuit Basin. Okay. Which is surprising. Let's go there because that is part of the, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, geyser area. Lots of geysers, and we got the, uh, 
um, fire a whole river that runs through here. Lots and lots of mud pots and geysers. So to find lava there, which did not have the concentrations of water, and you know how they're always talking about the earthquakes are caused by the water percolating down into the ground, um, causing the cracking of, um, yeah, and then causing the earthquakes. Anyways, yeah, and this is close to the area where a woman or dog were, I don't know if she was killed. I think she was killed when she fell into, um, one of the hot poles trying to, well, she didn't fall. She jumped in trying to rescue her dog. Yeah, so we got all these geysers, and then we got lava that doesn't have uh, the water in it, which is interesting because, yeah, you can see all these, yeah, by the coloring. One of the oldest geysers in the park is somewhere in this location that was formed um, during or shortly after the glaciers receded. And then there was a hydrothermal eruption. They worry more about hydrothermal eruptions uh, because some of them are just huge. They've been huge. Let's go down to Yellowstone Lake. Um, there was one down here. I believe it was Mary Bay, this area right here. Uh, when that blew out and created this little nodule, um, yeah, it actually created a tsunami. And threw out rocks miles away when that one erupted. There's all, there's another one right here. That's a, another area that was formed by a, um, hydrothermal eruption. This one too. Um, and over here, my west thumb. Yeah, well, this one was, they considered this, um, west thumb a, uh, another small caldera. But over here, yeah, um, there's more from hydrothermal eruptions. They say you got to worry more about that when you're visiting the park than um, an earthquake or an eruption. Only God knows when it's going to erupt. So anyways, the monitor that I'm currently showing you is up over here. Yeah, my fishing bridge up over here. This is where the uh, Yellowstone River exits the lake. And we got the Hayden Valley during the last um, ice age when it ended. Um, there was this ice dam here and it melted. And then they had a rush of water that created uh, the Hayden Valley up through here. So this is the monitor. Um borehole 208 for Yellowstone Lake that area that I showed you let's go back down here let's take a look at the uh, um, what was going on here let's take a look at the signature generally what happens is the magma comes in and it starts getting so loud that the monitor can't pick it up um, it picked it up a little bit um, but, yeah, it was just a gush of magma through here. Yeah, a place in the conduit where the magma was coming in was blocked. And then, yeah, then it popped. Allowed more magma to come in. See that? Kind of like a hose, a water hose. If it, you pinch it off, you know, you used to do that stuff. Playing with the water hose when you were a kid. Let's see what else is going on. All right, I want to take a look at the thumbnails. All right, there is Mary Lake. Um, let's see what we got down here. Old Faithful, West Thumb, Moose Creek, Western Boundary. They don't have, I don't see Denny Creek. Oh, there it is. Let's take a look at Denny Creek. Okay, yeah, I've been talking about this one because it's been showing screaming i'm not downloading it right now um because when i have more than four monitors uh, i can't download as much data and yeah i wish i could make that bigger no okay 
they used to have on here the depth location and the depth of the earthquakes but they're not doing that anymore here for this um, thumbnail site and you can see all the faults in this area but the last time I downloaded this monitor for Denny Creek yeah it was showing mostly tectonic let's take a look at um, Mirror Lake yeah it really doesn't do any good when I can't make it bigger Soda Butte also was showing signs of what I call screaming uh, that's when the magma comes in so fast and so loud the machines can't pick it up and can't really tell anything there either here we have purple mountain um, this was also an area where they had the mixing of the lava rhyolite along with basalt all right we'll go to the tilt meters and see what's going on let's go to Norris geyser basin um yeah see that one's still not working all right and let's go to madison river okay that one is working borehole 207 okay we got uplift going on and the disc showing all the shaking for the last week this is the last week and then here we got the last month so you can see we still have uplift going on yeah okay and then all the earthquakes and then this goes back to when they first started monitoring it back in 2011 yeah all right grant for yellowstone lake this is on the western side of yellowstone lake yeah lots of dots means it's been really shaken several years ago there was holy cow look at that um, there was an area over there where the magma was trying to come up they were having an earthquake swarm i believe 2018 2019 all right this is for the last month and we know yellowstone lake is tipping because of the uplift yeah look at all that yeah and this is where they reset the machine reset the gps uh the tilt meters um, when they had problems and one of the last ones i i showed you some of the data on these uh boreholes these are all boreholes these are very deep wells under the ground so they do not pick up any outside noise yep okay and this is the last week yeah this would be the strain meter showing you the direction of the strain that's coming under the ground which direction and they got channel zero channel one channel two and channel three i showed that too in my last uh, video so if you go here and click on station notes it'll show you the different boreholes but of course they're not all working let's make that bigger now again this is for grant okay see how it shows channel zero channel one channel two and channel three this is all for the strain okay and this well is 394 feet deep they actually had to do two wells the first one they dug for this area um they had a blowout yeah it was under the water was under so, so much pressure yeah and they had a heck of a time sealing it up and then if you go back farther down on the notes yeah you can read all the different notes of how long and the problems they had or problems they didn't have and uh, repairs that they've done in the past for lightning strikes or just they stop working that information you'll get if you click on this uh, far left side um, yeah column and then the other one the plots which will show you all the earthquakes and the uplift is on the right side so yeah you click on that and it'll take you to the page for the um, boreholes 
tell you if it's working or not working. Example, Panther. Okay, let's get it to click on there. This one is not working. Yeah. Yeah. Unavailable, unavailable, unavailable. Yeah, it's not working. And that, I think that's important because of the location. Um, where they had the mixing of the lavas. And that's close to what I call, uh, Grizzly Lake Fault, where they've been having earthquakes. And that one, I believe, either stopped working in 2011 or 2008. I don't remember right now, but a long time ago. Actually, 2018, not 2008. So it stopped working sometime in either 2011 and 2018, somewhere in there. Supposedly, let's go to Grizzly Lake if I can. Um, the group of scientists that I had my interview with is going to send someone to Yellowstone sometime this year and ask me what I would like them to do. And I told them, get gas readings from Grizzly Lake because there's a fault that runs through here and there's been all kinds of earthquakes. Uh, this fault, there's one here and I believe another one to the left runs down. And joins up with the uh, fault that goes to Hedgen Lake. And that's uh, when, you know, the area where all those people were killed in 1959 when they had that large earthquake. I don't know. Maybe the reason Google Earth is not working is because I was supposed to show you this without my mess of notes and fault lines drawn out. Um, like I said, I believe everything happens for a reason. If it starts working again today, then I'll know that was it. But yeah, um, Creative Society. It's a group of scientists from around the world. And, um, they're going to send someone there. I'm, I'm sure they're a geologist. They have, um, handheld machines to take, uh, gas readings, which will be great to know. Um, they're, uh, YVO. They are University of Utah. Are, they do have at least one monitor that is taking live gas readings, second by second, minute by minute, but they do not make it available to the public. When I first started getting into uh, learning about volcanoes and whatnot, um, I was watching El Euro before its eruption, and the um, government of Spain actually had online where you could watch uh, the gas readings as they were taken for carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, all that stuff. Yeah, you could see it minute by minute, second by second. Yeah. Um, but Spain evidently, um, yeah, believed in, yeah, giving more detail to people, uh, not censoring it like the United States does. So anyways, that's all I have for you right now kind of a lengthy video um, what are your thoughts uh, make sure you're still subscribed because the AI the dumb AI um, often unsubscribes people from their favorite channel or people you're subscribed to um, I've heard all the time for years and years they don't get notifications but make sure you're still subscribed if you wish to be subscribed if you are thank you very much Many of you have been following me ever since I started uh, putting up YouTube uh, videos. Um, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your yeah, loyalty. Um, and as always, be prepared for a disaster. You don't know what's going to happen. Could be floods. It could be war. Tornadoes. Um, train derailment. Always be prepared for a disaster. Um, please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.